G'day everyone, welcome back to another episode of the podcast and today I'm going to be talking about why Jake Paul got into boxing, why he's winning and why you find him so damn frustrating. (laughs) So basically I'm going to talk about all of these different things, we're going to get into essentially how Jake actually got into boxing because obviously he's been fighting Torrent Tyron Woodley. He won his four other people. Him and his brother have just got to the boxing game and they started to like really take over. They went from like pulling silly pranks and getting absolutely viral on YouTube and and crying about their lives and having like depression and alcohol addiction and all of these different things and dancing on the edge as far as almost getting in trouble with law enforcement and all this other stuff. So we're going to talk about those, why and how, like their actual journey and their hero's journey into why they got into boxing, how they got into boxing and how they're actually winning and also what is going to happen in the future of them and like what what do I predict in terms of, you know, using them as an example in terms of masculinity, developing, personal development, the hero's journey and all of those different things. So I'm going to use those as an example. So hopefully that you, when you're listening to this, you can take away some tools and reflection skills in order to understand everything yourself and and bring it onto yourself and understand, you know, maybe maybe what's some stuff that's going on with your life. So before we start the actual podcast, guys, just let you guys know if you listen to the start and the intro, I have some coaching spaces available. Woohoo! So I have part-time coaching, full-time coaching, and some community coaching. If you're interested in those, head to coreyboutwell.com and you can find out more. You just follow the prompts, go through, and we can have a chat and see if we are a good match. Secondly, if you guys like bone broth or you want to get like extremely healthy and you understand the benefits of bone broth, you can go to theherbaldoctors.com and put in the code Corey12 to get 12% off, which is great. Or just head to the links below. You can click the links below or head to the link in my bio on Instagram at Corey Boutwell and you can get find the link there really quickly and you can get 12% off Best of the Bone Bone Broth, which is fantastic. I also have a recipe ebook available for you guys. So essentially how I how I got that was I did so much research into like what are the best ingredients for performance and health and everything. And I went through and I created these articles you can find on the website, coreyboutworld.com. And I made these a couple of different articles which basically go through what are the best ingredients ever. And then what I did was I created a whole bunch of different different recipes that I still eat now like every single day and try to make them as simple as possible, tasty as possible and made in a way that they are super efficient. And there's, I've got meal prep, bone broth, bone broth recipes, normal recipes, and I have all different types of recipes in there that you can get if you just click the links below, you can find that recipe ebook and then go nuts on that. I also have a training program available. Obviously, I've been training in the gym for like 12 years. I like to keep everything in a way where I generate generate as much stimulus as possible to my target muscles in all kinds of ranges and motions as well as performing the exercise correctly and safely. I like to do everything in terms of muscle building in order to, you know, create a healthier, more long longevity focused body where you can keep crushing it in the in the gym and I teach you everything how to do that in the program. Essentially, if you go through it and you do the program, you won't need a PT ever again because you'll learn how to design your own program, you'll learn all the skills and everything that you need for that as well, which is quite fantastic. And as always, guys, this podcast is brought to you and is sponsored by Eternum Labs. And if you want to basically get into the highest performance as possible, if you want to be in your best energy, if if you're somebody who wants to live a really long time and you care about your body, they are some sups in there that you must check out. Out. They've got sleep supplements, we've got energy supplements, we've got anti-aging supplements, we have all kinds of supplements and the Lion's Mane is really good. I've been using it so much every single day and that's probably why I talk so fast because I always have so much Lion's Mane in my diet. So and I actually mix that with my bone broth and you can, obviously you can use the recipe ebook or you can use, you know, just some of the Eternal Lads products with the bone broth, whatever, in order to optimize your brain, optimize your body to live that really good life. So thank you for listening to that and it's time to get in to the podcast. But before we do, please follow, like, and subscribe. Please leave a review on Apple. If you leave a review on Apple, that like helps me greatly. It helps us. We recently have just jumped this podcast from number 180 to 155 on the Apple health rating for, for health and fitness in Australia. So if you leave a review, that would mean the absolute world. If you subscribe to the YouTube channel, That would absolutely bring everything up and we can share and get these good messages out with everyone. So thank you so much for doing that. 
So yes, let's now get into the podcast. Finally. (laughs) So essentially, Jake Paul, what's going on? What's he doing? What's happening? So there's three main points I'd like to talk about. One is going to be like the myth and the the philosophy side of things and, and how that actually works and plays out. The second is going to be like brain brain and, and, and like brain science in terms of why they're actually going through and doing what they're doing. And then the third one is leadership. And that sort of like helps you kind of understand if you find them frustrating or not. But I think it's really quite fantastic to understand these things. I think it's, it's really quite awesome. So essentially Jake's journey, obviously we've seen him from being viral on some, I, I mean, I can't even remember some platforms that weren't even around, like that aren't even around anymore. Um, it's gone viral on some platforms and you've seen him and his brother Logan um, just go through a whole bunch of different things. We've been watching them grow up. Like they're so young. They're, they're, they're in their mid twenties and they're completely so young. And I would like to start this podcast off by sharing with you guys quick stories in terms of development, masculine development, king development. We're going to use the term king. I know there's a lot of people out there that don't like the term for specific archetypes, which is what I'm going to be talking about in terms of king, but I'm going to use it for this sake. So essentially we all have these different archetypes within our personal psyche. And if you guys want to learn out more, you can listen to my podcast, Carol S. Pearson, or you could listen to my Hero's Journey podcast. Either one of those will, or the King Moira Magician Love podcast. Either one of those will explain to you this on a much higher level detail. But this masculine development has a story that has been told through a whole bunch of different resources. And if you want to learn out more, want to learn more on this, I would read Hero with a Thousand Faces, King Moira Magician Lover, um, The Origins and History of Consciousness, Man and His Symbols. I would also look at some of Jordan Peterson's work and stuff that he does. Um, Thus Spoke Zarathustra by Frederick Nietzsche. So there's, there's, there's just basically a whole bunch of resources that, uh, resources that explain this story. Now, one of the things that Jordan Peterson likes to talk about, and it's a story that he likes to discuss, is the Mesopotamian king. And basically that story is essentially there's a ruler in this kingdom, in this city, in, in the palace. And essentially every single year, New Year's, they drag him out, out of the emperor city and... They, the, the people lash him, whip him and strike him. And every time they strike him, he has to say something that he's done wrong, something that he could have done, something that he didn't do and why he didn't do them and how he could be a better king. So essentially that's like humbling the king, bringing him down. This also happens within the story of the Buddha. So the Buddha was in a palace, lived in a palace and his dad never wanted him to see anything bad because he wanted him to be the best ruler ever. He didn't know what sickness, death, or even growing old was. And it wasn't until he left the palace, I'm not sure if it was secretive or not, but he ended up seeing these things and experiencing them. And he had a complete freak out because he didn't even know what they were until he was like the age of 18 or 19 or something. So then he ended up living living among the slums. He left. He was like, no, I need to experience this. Left among the slums and and lived in, in, in that world for a while before traveling to a mountain and becoming enlightened. So essentially he's experienced the light and the dark and he's brought it together in order to become enlightened. And that's like a very brief story of the Buddha. A- another story is just a modern one is of Batman. And Batman is very grandiose, which is a term when the king gets too kingy, um, which we could use the term, the word tyrant. And Batman is, there's a comic story of him flying in his night wing over the city, over Gotham City, and he finds a Joker and he's shooting him with all these different guns and his machine guns and every single bullet's missing him. And the Joker's laughing at him, pulls out his gun, spins the cartridge, puts a bullet in there, points at a Batman, shoots it, hits one part that's wrong on the night wing and meow, pew, the night wing comes crashing down. It's sort of like to you know, humble the Batman. Now this story is just saying it's just been told throughout history for like the longest period of time. And it also plays a lot into philosophy and psychology. And essentially like philosophy is like the precursor to psychology. That's what they called psychology like back in the day. But they just told it through stories, which is why I really like these stories. Now, how does this play out with Jake and Logan? Well, essentially, I've been thinking about this a lot and having conversations and have just come to some really cool realizations, which I hope you can take into like yourself personally. And essentially, they're in the stage where they've been in a like a leadership, responsible, king-type position for so long. If we look at their lives, they've had, and why like, we could find it quite frustrating, is that they've had so much freedom, they've had so much financial success, they've had so much influence, they have so much power. 
like I, I, I would feel and I would assume greatly that a lot of their friends and a lot of people that are close to them, they would employ because why not? Of course they would. Um, and a lot of like people can't really tell them what to do. And essentially, after a period of time of the king being on top of the mountain for so long, there's a, like or on top of the palace, there's also another, some other really good stories and myth that show that when the king, let's say, has been born in a king position, instead of doing the Buddha and seeking out um, what the slums were and figuring out what bad stuff is and, and learning about it and, and, and diving into that, is a lot of the time the kings will end up, if they're in the king position for way too long, they'll just burn the whole city down. And you hear Jordan Peterson talk about this a lot and it makes a lot of sense. Like if you're at the top and there's nothing to challenge you and there's nothing to, you know, put some danger into your life, you just create chaos and burn everything down. And essentially, I'm actually quite impressed that Jake and Logan ended up choosing boxing because there has been some video clips of them who, when they have been like crying or so in their addiction, obviously they're in the media all the time. So any of their personal stuff is just going to absolutely be online. Um for everyone to see, which is just, is crazy. But essentially, like, I I think it's really good that they've turned to boxing because we know what else would they have? Like, they have everything that they want. Like, who else is going to challenge them? Who else can tell them what to do? But when you're in a boxing ring, it's just one person or even just a fight. It's just you versus someone else ready to just box on and bash each other in the face. Like, that's it. It's just like the best physically and mentally. You've got to be so switched on and present for that person that you've got to be back and forth. Now, obviously... What makes it so entertaining is that you can see like Jake is like, he dances on the edge of being like extremely cheeky, like he calls people bitches, he swears at them, he claims all this crazy stuff, he pranks people, he does like some stuff that's like, you know, borderline on the law, he says all these like uh, crazy different things. But I'm unsure personally if it's that's just for attention hype in terms of like to kind of like, uh, like to to get into the media because at the same time, like they do also donate a lot of stuff to charity. Like him and Logan both do a lot of like charity work and all these things for charity as well. So it does sort of balance out. I'm not sure if it's legit or where they're going, but I think it's very important to know that they're on the hero's journey and they're in the trials and the tests into mature manhood. Now, one of the things that's very important to know in terms of like, like King theory and being like a, a, like a high level King or a really important leader is that, to be, to be a really good one, you need to have a mature type of situation and environment and in, in, internal as well. We need to balance like uh, being mature internally with your situation and your environment so you can show up maturely. Now, if you're too much of someone who is in like a, a mature king position who's turned of a tyrant, a very extreme example of someone like that would be like Hitler who's someone who's just gone way too far on one end because they've got all this power and responsibility, they believe in this cause and they're just going to influence all these people to do stuff and it's like, holy, like they've got a mission and they're out. The immature masculine or the immature king is known as the high chair tyrant, also known as like the the high chair tyrant or the, the kid that's super demanding, like, uh, give me attention, give me what I want, blah, 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 blah. And it takes a long time for men to develop into a mature king and a lot through our trials and tests of us in the hero's journey, we're going to go through, you know, um, troubles and, and hurdles and have to slay certain dragons and do certain things in order to develop our own masculinity so that we can become mature and we're immature in the process, Right. And a lot of that time is what I find just so fascinating is like where the link to just prove that so accurate is like Jake calls himself the problem child. <laughs> I just had that link and I was like, of course he does. Because they're still wrapped up in the um, immature masculine with a lot of the stuff that they are doing. Also the immature king. And that's not to say that they don't do mature stuff or immature stuff. That's just the archetypical words and the frameworks uh, around that. And that's just the labels that we use in the different psychology, especially in the book King, Warrior, Magician, Lover by Robert Moore. You can obviously go in and and have a look at that or listen to the podcast that I did on it. Um, So yeah, I find that absolutely fascinating. And essentially what they have done is when, like a theory that I like to uh, talk about a lot is that men specifically, especially when they're on the hero's journey, need danger and they need to utilize it correctly and the danger is a very strong force and that can be used in terms of like a lot of people if they don't have a healthy danger in their life that shows up drugs alcohol porn video games um being lazy distracting self-sabotaging self-destructing and all of these different things along 
what happens a lot of the time is that you'll see, this is quite serious, is if danger isn't cultivated within men, there's a lot of time that they'll lead themselves to suicide or they'll burn themselves out and lead themselves to like suicide. And obviously that's a big topic and I'll talk about that another time, but it is very true. Now what happened, which I find is like quite beautiful, is obviously Logan and Jake have had like nothing left, right? They had nothing. They've had everything that they've wanted. So unconsciously, they are sorting out or looking after someone to drag them out of the city. They're looking to go into the slums. They're looking for a Joker to shoot them down as like Batman, like mythologically, unconsciously. It's like, why'd they get into there? Into boxing and stuff. And why are they fighting? Why are they challenging all these people? They're literally fighting the best fighters in the world, which is crazy. They are like screaming internally to get humbled. I think that like, you know, especially because they keep choosing bigger opponents, bigger and better opponents. And they give themselves some sort of advantage. Like obviously Jake going up against an MMA fighter in boxing is going to have even the playing fields a little bit and he ended up winning like good on him for that I, I reckon that he must have worked so hard and really manifested um everything and to, to to make that happen but his, that doesn't change the point that still unconsciously he's looking to get knocked and he wants to get humbled and I'm quite excited to see what happens if he does or if he doesn't so I hope for his sake personally that he does get knocked out soon because he's actually looking for that so I hope to pick someone that's going to knock him out because I think, personally, if he keeps winning all these boxing fights and he keeps putting under the tests and trials, as he'll get bored. And then, like, you know, what's next after that? Oh, no. Like, who knows? Could be self-sabotaging. Could not. He may, he may not. We never know. But in terms of if he does get knocked somewhere in the future by someone, um, I think that would be one of the best things ever for him because I think that they will... Like, they've obviously taken fighting and, and sprinting with it, but I think that they'll take it to another level. And obviously, they're getting coached by the best people in the world, and they're learning all these different techniques, and they're just exercising all of their um, talent and physical a attributes to everything. But, man, I, I can't wait to see in terms of, um, yeah, mythologically, like, what happens, because it's just so interesting watching people unconsciously, like, go to put the work in. Because, obviously... I think what's really important is a sport like boxing, what you put in is directly you're going to get out. And yes, it is a little bit luckier for other for some people like them who have access and resources to get the best coaches and stuff in the world and, and train like their absolute hardest and have all the time to do so as well, which I find is like, this is why it's just such, so, so entertaining, but also can be quite frustrating. And I'm... um. I like the whole journey. I like watching all of this different stuff. I think it's quite fantastic because I think a lot about this in terms of how they're actually going and it's, I just find it super fantastic. So if you have any questions, please ask in the comments below. Like or send me a DM if you're listening to this on um, a podcast. If you're watching the YouTube video, just comment below. Um, I'd love to like answer your questions and see your thoughts on this. The second point I wanted to make was the brain science point and that is, it's very simple, it's very easy, it's very quick. And basically is that once you've had a rush of feelings and emotions and stimulus and like dopamine, endorphin, serotonin releases from planning something, working your ass off, building it up, getting ready and expecting a certain dopamine release and, and unsure what's going to happen and unpredictably or like, we, like you're uncertain about what's going to happen and then you go in and you win something, huge dopamine release. Your brain literally gets wired and stimulated on such a crazy level that it sort of gets numb. And these guys, uh, Jake and... Logan have had so much crazy stuff happen to them. They've done so many crazy things that they that the the senses in their brain need to have something that is so stimulating in order to keep them going. The only way to get out of that is to like do a bunch of meditation and to um, listening from an Andrew Huberman podcast would be to not celebrate all of their wins. That's for sure. <laughs> Just so they can dampen that dopamine effect because it's such a rush. But hence why they do things like looking after boxing is that's like the most dangerous sport, right? I mean, I remember Googling a while ago, I had this thought, I was like, what is the most skillful sport? And I thought it was going to be ice hockey, but it turns out that ice hockey was number two. So I was really close because skating, inline, all the different skills and then fighting. But um, boxing is number one because it's the most unpredictable because you, you know, it's all split second decision. You're relying heavily on skill and unconscious stuff. So how much work you put in definitely comes back out. So that's a little bit on the brain science is that because their brains have been, have experienced so much crazy stuff, they need the rush from this just to like feel fantastic. So it's, it's going to be interesting to see what comes next. Do they go down the path of dark darkness? Do they go down the path of light? And I, I think personally, if Logan and Jake get knocked really hard, that they will go down the path of light. If they don't, 
They could da- they could dance on the end of danger. But I think it's really awesome that they are, are, are into boxing because that's also going to force them um, to which made my third point, which is leadership. It's going to force them to be in a position of power and influence, which is if they're integral to their word, if they show that they can be trustworthy and if they are unbiased towards a lot of thing and not being as controversial, not as controversial. I do think a little bit of controversialness is healthy and just, that's just my personal opinion. But if they show that these have these leadership qualities and they keep doing really good things for, for charity, um, and if they do keep learning the sport of boxing, obviously once they do get knocked and humbled, because obviously everyone talks about it, like Joe Rogan and other martial art of people that I talk about, they're like, everyone who fights has been, not, except for Floyd Mayweather, but everyone who fights has been either knocked out, choked out, or something's happened and um, they've had that experience of like, whoa, that was crazy, let's get back let's get back to it. But it's, it forces them to take it a little bit more seriously and they have to do the extra things. They have to do the mindset stuff. They have to do the, the meditation stuff. They have to learn mental disciplines, do all the self-reflection and really sort out their mind, not just their body so that they're super clear and focused to get into everything. And here's one really little interesting thought that I've also had in terms of what what is making Jake and Logan like really good fighters is the utter confidence that they have. Because they're constantly in the media, because that they're constantly getting judged by people and constantly people are just like slamming them and going off on them and there's hundreds and thousands of YouTube videos and hundreds of thousands of, you know, posts and everything about them. It's just absolutely overwhelming is that they're desensitized to everything and they just let confidence flow. They don't care about anything else. They've been slammed for like their whole lives and they've been brought up and they're just happy to do what they do. They're happy to take the piss out of themselves. So in front of a crowd, in front of a camera, they're just like, they're at home. They're completely at home. They're not like other fighters who are like, oh my God, this is a fight. Oh, this is a big thing for me. There's a lot of money riding on this. They've got no other pressures. Like they haven't got money as a pressure. They haven't got deals as a pressure. They haven't got any of this other stuff. They have, they've, they've got everything that they want. So when they actually get into a fight, I believe that they're going to be a lot calmer and a lot more composed than what other people may be when actually jumping into a fight, which is going to give them a little bit of an edge, which is sort of like fantastic. And I think they've also learned that through like acting skills because they obviously run through and do so much stuff on camera being themselves and acting and stuff that when they get into a ring they can really just act out someone who's extremely confident and they can act that when they're training and they don't have much else to sort of think and worry about which is just oozes confidence which i think is like man it's a blessed position to be in and i think we could all take a little lesson and try to actually do that ourselves but yeah in terms of like leadership goes, they're going to be in a positions to be really good leaders and that's where people are going to judge them because people are going to project themselves onto other people and be like, well, if you're mature or not mature, it's like, well, if I was in their position, what would I be doing? And if they're being really silly or doing something stupid or whatever it is, um, which is fine because they're in the trials and the tests, I think, of, of masculine in their mid-twenties, of course, that they're going to be doing stuff like that's just part of them learning and growing as long as it's not hurting too many other people, um, which I don't think that it is. But yeah, so we project ourselves on those and we'll be like, oh, would we do that? Would we not? And then if we wouldn't or we don't agree with it, of what, what we know currently, then we get put off. But if we put ourselves in their position and live the life that exactly the life that they have lived, we'd, we'd be doing the exact same stuff that they are. <laughs> but yeah, so what you kind of see in them that if you find frustrating or don't really like, there's this is stuff kind of going on with yourself. And um, yeah, I'd like to be in a position myself personally of like uh, such influence where you don't have to worry about other stuff. So like when, when you get on a stage or when you get on something or there's like a big event going on, you don't have to worry about anything because you have everything else sorted out. I think that's like, like actual goal for a lot of people to achieve. But at the same time, be aware that if you're there for too long, something's going to unconsciously come up and going to humble you. So I hope you learned something from this uh, podcast, guys. And I hope like, you know, just some questions for you guys is like, you know, where do you see yourself as a leader? Where do you need to get your dopamine hits from? Like, are you desensitized? Are you not? Are you in a position where you need to be humbled or do you need to chase mature king or do you need to really embody immature king for a while? Because the only way to get to a mature king is to embody immature um, high chair tyrant for a little while and to see how that goes. And it could be really scary either or. So I just like to sort of stimulate your brain as to where, why, and how you're at. And I hope that you realized and understood, you know, why Jake is like he is and why 
Logan is or like they is and you know why Jake calls himself the problem child and how he actually got into boxing I just find all that stuff just so fascinating how you can look at myth and the stories in it and it tells everything which is just quite fantastic so if you took anything or got any value from this please give us a subscribe that would just mean the absolute world to me and that way you can don't have to miss out on all the good stuff and if you have any questions please just comment below I'd love to get back to them or send me a DM and then what would be extremely extremely special for me is if you could please share this on your story just click somewhere if you if like if you got any value from this if you didn't all good but if you got any value from this click on the little button click share put it onto your story of facebook or whatever it is and just be like this was cool um <laughs> if there was someone goes out there and says this was cool on something i'm going to be so impressed so yeah please let me know what you think i'd, I'd love to to know please leave it leave a review as well because an apple podcast we're at 155 for health and fitness in australia and we want to get up we want to get in the top 10 we get that number one and you gotta do that by um yeah leaving a review and a share and a like and subscribe and all those things so Big love, guys. Thank you so much for listening to this. I hope you got a little bit out of this and there's a little bit of entertainment for your day. And I'll see you in the next one.